the Raptors replaced Fred Van Vliet with a much cheaper version of him, Dennis Schroeder. The former Laker has some of the most underrated strength the game has to offer at the point guard spot, not to mention the fact that he's known for being one of the association's fastest players. Schroeder's average cap hit for the next two years will be just 13 million, whereas Van Vliet's will be over 42 million. Don't get it twisted, Dennis definitely isn't as good as Fred per se. However, comparing their stats per 36 minutes last season, and Schroeder took exactly four attempts less than Van Vliet. Releasing attempts at a much less frequent rate helped Dennis shoot over 3% of points better from the field than Fred. The reason that's perfect for Toronto is that, with a developing point forward in Scotty Barnes, the Raptors offense didn't need its point guard to be taking a ton of shots. With that said, Dennis's speed off the dribble in terms of the first step that he has to get past his defender will be really tough to handle next to the Raptors personnel. Toronto's young role men, who can both hang in the dunker spot and explode for finishes after setting a screen, will form a dangerous one-two punch with Dennis. Schroeder lets the game come to him offensively, he'll swing it after crossing half court, attack on the catch when you need him to, and is not going to force the issue offensively, which should help Toronto's flow. But stay tuned for a stat on Dennis that proves why the Raptors' summer bargain was damn savvy. Right quick, just 13.3% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I post mixtapes on Instagram and mostly troll on Twitter, so go follow at Hoops on both platforms. Appreciate any bit of support. In addition to being a more efficient and willing passer than Van Vliet, Schroeder was also really clutch in 22-23. Schroeder ranked 9th in the NBA in clutch time field goal percentage for the Lakers last season, and he joined Scotty Barnes, who was number 7 in that category, so the Raptors will have a lot of timely scoring under pressure. Van Vliet had a lot more pressure on him last year than Dennis, but for comparison, Fred was conversely in the bottom 6 among all players in clutch field goal efficiency. While Dennis made 52.6% of his shots in the clutch, Fred made just 29.9% of his, according to NBA.com. In Darko Rajakovic's Serbian-bred offensive system featuring what should lead to an extremely high volume of passes, there simply wasn't going to be room for such a ball-dominant quarterback like Van Vliet. Houston was more in need of such a primary creator, which is why letting Fred walk was ideal for both parties involved. Additionally for the Raptors in 2023's offseason, re-signing Jakob Pertl for four years was such a well-orchestrated call by Masai Ujiri. Jakob's perfect skill set for the space and pace modern NBA as a screen-setting athletic phenom up front who's not afraid to contest any shot down low has turned him into an $80 million man. For such a raw prospect that Yak was in his early days with Toronto long before the Raptors had to reacquire him via trade in the Lowry DeRozan era, it's been amazing to watch Pirtle morph into one of the most valued bigs in the game. I can't even imagine how tough to defend a two-man game of Dennis the Menace and Yak is going to look like. The speed, precision, and playmaking chops from Dennis, plus the hand-eye coordination and laterality from Jakob, I'm telling you right now, will be one of the best pick-and-roll connections in the league. Shifting from the hardwood to the front office, and if the Raptors are going to compete in 23-24, they have to sort out the situation with Siakam and Ananobi. Both Pascal and OG find themselves in the trade rumor mill, and reports indicate the priority is to build around Scotty Barnes. I'm not sure if trading Siakam is the way to go, given there's the potential for some dicey 3-4 ball screen action between Scott and Pascal, considering they can both handle the rock pretty well. Ananobi is more expendable from a creation standpoint, but trading away one of the game's best wing defenders in OG wouldn't be a good look either. Therefore, instead of just trading away two proven valuable options, I'll suggest that there needs to be better communication between the front office and coaching staff in terms of letting Ananobi and Siakam in on their expected roles. To be fair, OG has requested more of a role within the offense, which you could argue makes him the most qualified trade bait. However, if there hasn't been any tension regarding roles between Pascal Siakam and the organization, then they shouldn't be trading away such a talented player. If the move for Siakam is to go back to being a second option, then telling him that would be the way to go instead of just moving him because he's not fit to be a number one. That right there is what makes being a good communicator as a GM and being able to relate to your players as a coach so damn important. 
the communication level wasn't even close to being there with Coach Nick Nurse at the helm in terms of between the coaching staff and the front office. However, with Darko at the helm, the front office may have a better chance at establishing a connection to Pascal and letting him in on their outline for success, more so than they did with Nurse. This should be at least a step that's taken, meaning letting Siakam know that he has to be the second option to Barnes in terms of handling the ball before just trading him away. Siakam being the second ball handler doesn't necessarily mean he'll be the second scorer. All he needs to do is accept being a primary screener as opposed to being a primary off the dribble guy and go back to getting buckets primarily in the half court as opposed to on coast to coast attacks, which can at times disorganize the offense. But trading both Pascal and OG isn't out of the cards considering the organization is definitely headed down the path towards building around a player at their exact position in Scotty B. Let me know your thoughts on Toronto down...